Hello and welcome to the F1 CATIA car tutorial. This is creating a balsa wood CO2 car that will be routed out and raced. Uh, with CATIA I want you to make sure that our environment is set up the same as uh, it should be in the tutorial. So first of all you want to go to view toolbars and then down to customize and Restore all contents, yes or okay, and restore position, and okay. This way all of the toolbars are going to show where they need to show in the tutorial. Close that off. Second thing is I want you to make sure that under tools and options that we are working in millimeter lengths. So you go to options, parameter and measure, under the length uh, units tab and then length Make sure this says millimeter. If it was an inch, because we were doing something an inch last time, you need to change it to millimeter. And then say OK. So that should set up the environment the same way that this tutorial is being shown. So let's get started. File new, part, and give the part name car chassis. We'll start up a new sketch on the XY plane. So we choose XY plane off the navigation tree, open a new sketch, and we're going to sketch three lines in the lower right hand corner. One vertical line, approximately 30, and you can see the coordinates at the mouse point. A line approximately 130, and a third line. And notice that I'm snapping to the end point of these lines. So I'm creating a geometric constraint. This one should be approximately 10. I'll press the fit icon just to get a little bit of a larger view. And then we'll go to a three point arc. And again, I'm picking at the end point of that line to create a geometric constraint. And then two random points that are not going to apply any constraints. So that's what we have so far. Again, I'll press the fit icon just to get everything on the screen a little more consistent. Let's now create some geometric, or sorry, dimensional constraints. So we'll go to the constraint dialog box. And for the time being, I just want to pick the geometry and put the dimension on. I'm not worried about what the dimension is. I just want to have those dimensions on there so that I can modify them after. We need to do a control pick between this horizontal line and the zx plane so we do control pick and then place that dimension on we want to also do a control pick between this vertical line and the end point of the arc so make sure that you do a control pick there to get the overall length and we also want to do a control pick between this horizontal line and again the end point of that arc to create this dimension all right so we are ready to uh, change these dimensions. The overall length should be 210. This should be 2. The radius should be 300. This should be 6. 120. 18. And 29. Now we need to apply one more geometric constraint between this vertical line and the YZ plane. So we do a control pick between those two, apply a vertical or a sorry geometric constraint of coincident. And that ties it to this plane. The position of the car is very important for when we go to machine it afterwards. We want it in this position. If it's not, it's not going to machine properly. It'll be we'll have to bring it back, reposition it, and then go to the machining center again. So once we've got this all dimensioned, we need to create a spline. So on the workbench, we find the spline tool, and we want to pick at the end point of the line, create five or six random points on our way to the end point of the arc, and double click the end point of the arc, and that will finish our spline command. This will allow us to create a nice airfoil or aerodynamic pattern 
as we build our car. Our sketch is done. It's tied in at the endpoints, which is important. Let's exit this workbench and create the solid out of it. So we'll pad, add value of 32.5. The arrow is pointing upwards and OK. And that has created our pad. We're going to change this to a shaded edge with views. Go to an isometric view and fit this. We will create one more thing, and that's an uh, axis system. So we'll go to Insert, Axis System, and just press OK. That places this on the screen, which will be used later on. For the time being, we can just know that we've put it there. And that is the end of this tutorial. In the next one, we'll look at creating the wheel wells.